What is going on, YouTube? It's your boy, Spanko, back with Tony. Hello. And uh, Tony, you're doing Magistus for us today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so out of all the support to come out in Burst of Destiny, one of the cooler ones, but unfortunately not focused on, is the Magistus support in their new boss monster. And it actually does some really cool things for the deck. So I'll get into that when I get to the deck profile, but uh, starting things off, I guess, we have the four Magistus monsters that initially came out in Genesis Impactors. Three, Zorora, the Flame Magistus. Three, the um, Riliona, the Glass Magistus. Uh, three, Endymion. And one, Crowley. So if it doesn't sound familiar, these monsters are related to the original Spellcaster archetypes released in the past. Witchcrafters, Endymion, Invoked, and this one, which doesn't have an archetype yet. However, each of these monsters have effects that do support their original archetypes while also having effects that generate, that support their own strategy of equipping monsters from the x to gain additional effects. For example, these two here, Zawara and Endymion, have an effect while they're on the field to equip a Magistus uh, x monster to them. They also have an additional effect upon having something equipped. Zawara, when equipped, can special summon a spellcaster, level 4 or lower, from your hand or graveyard, with its effects negated. Uh, this is useful because this is a tuner, so this, alongside any level 4, makes a free level 8. Uh, and Demi on the other hand can target one face-up spell on the field, which can include Pentium Scales, i.e. supporting the original archetype, blow it up, and then cycle a card. The other two, however, work differently. Uh, Miliona, when no more special summons, searches for any Magistus spell and trap card, which gives you access to the rest of your support. Crowley, on the other hand, can special summon itself by sending a spellcaster from your hand or field to the graveyard, and can change its attribute if you wanted to use it for, you know, uh, invoke plays. Uh, furthermore, because it can change the attribute, you can all turn this into a water and overlay it with the water uh, attribute in Endymion to make Bahamut Shark for some really funky oh, things. Oh, yeah, that's cool. And it's actually quite easy to set up with one of the extra deck monsters in that I'll showcase later. But realistically, these two also have an additional effect that become really important now, and that they can banish themselves from the graveyard to then target one of your uh, Magistus monsters in your graveyard and equip it to one of your Magistus monsters. This effect wasn't as useful before, it helped you Voltron up some of your monsters, but in most cases you never ended up with a Magistus monster, so this effect was kind of used only for backup. Now you can use this effect to actually lock out your opponent, and I'll showcase that a little later. But you're going to be using all these effects essentially to just swarm the field. You can use this or this, you can use these two to essentially grab cards to extend the field, this card to actually extend, and this card to cycle to get the cards you need. And these four alone create actually a very functional engine that allows you to ex access almost any kind of X deck you want. Uh, partially because, and I didn't mention this, there's no restriction on what, uh, what you can summon with these monsters. Oh, okay. Yeah. One more we thing, but just before, just before you keep going, make sure to subscribe to Tony's channel, um, if you guys haven't already, because I know a lot of you guys are watching these videos, but you're not subscribing, and then also make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you guys want to see more Tony. Tony, just have to give you a quick plug over there. Yeah, no, it's like, uh, again, on my channel, I try to go a little more in-depth with these. I'm a little, but I don't upload as, like, dailies, but... I think realistically, I think you know, if you like an in-depth deck profile more than what you're seeing here, you might enjoy my channel. Uh, by the time this comes out, he'll probably already have this profile on his channel. So if you guys want a super, super in-depth, it'll be there. Right. All Moving right. into the stuff that supports these Magistus, we actually have two Magic Calibra. Uh, there's a few things that benefits this card. One, it's a normal monster, which means you can summon it out off of something like your Unexpected Die. It's a level 4, which combos well with all your other Magistus monsters being level 4 as well. It's a water attribute, which means you can overlay with your Endymion to make your uh, Bahamut Shark. And it's also a tuner as well, which is particularly important because it's also a spellcaster. One of your Magistus boss monsters only requires a spellcaster tuner, and this is that monster that works with it. Finally, it, just because it's a pendulum scale, you can also, if you were to brick with it, blow it up with your Endymion to cycle a card. Oh, okay. Not bad. Right. Uh, then, to further the water attribute, we have two Jigabyte. This card can special summon itself while you control the Spellcaster. As it conveniently turns out, not only does your Magistus boss monster need a Spellcaster tuner, but it does not have any requirement on the non-tuner, which means this, alongside any Spellcaster tuner, makes that boss monster as well. Likewise, being a water monster that's level 4, it also makes Bahamut Shark with your uh, Endymion. So, cool plays there. Uh, it also floats into another one of its kind, but unfortunately, I don't play another of its kind, so it doesn't quite work out. Yeah. Uh, then we have two... Uh, Trick Clown. Trick Clown is useful for a number of reasons. One, it's a spellcaster, level 4. You know how that works already. But there's actually a lot of ways to get this card and trick its effect off. For example, you could special summon it off your Zorora directly from your hand. And when you synchro summon it, it comes back to let you do a follow-up play. Likewise, if you had the single Crowley in your hand already or searched off of one of your effects, you can then discard the Clown to special summon it and then Clown comes back to make a free rank 4 that way too. So there's actually a lot of ways to get this card off without even if you have Brick with it. And because it is a level 4, it does really enable most of your plays. Nice. 
Finally, we have for our hand traps, just three effect failure. Uh, it's there for effect negation. It's also spell caster, which means it can be used for the cost of Crowley to special summon. Okay. Uh, moving into the spells, we have three Trimagistus. Uh, Trimagistus is a spell that has two modes. The oh, actually has really three it has three effects, but two modes. Uh, the first effect is for the first time when your spell casts will be destroyed by battle. It's not. It's just battle protection. Fantastic. The more important effect is you could do one of two things on your turn. Either A, special summon any spell caster from your hand that's level four or lower, which means that in, also, in turn it also lets you special summon things like Trick Clown. Or you can send this card to the graveyard to special summon as many different Magistus monsters from your hand, essentially acting like a pendulum summon of sorts. And this effect, both of these effects are really useful. As it turns out, Crowley is the only Magistus monster that actually has an extension effect, meaning that at some point you may open a bunch of Magistus monsters that you may not be able to get out. And that's why you do want to play this card, not only because it can special summon out those spellcasters, but it also can let you dump your entire hand if you open too many. This is also particularly important because one of your monsters that searches into your Magistus applies so after you do your normal summon. So this is one of the few ways that you actually get to utilize the monster you search off of that effect. Uh, yeah, so this is just your extension. Nice. From there, we have our revival to uh, Magistus Vitra. Vitra targets a level four lower Magistus in your graveyard, brings it back. And also has an additional effect of, uh, as a replacement effect to protect one of your Magistus equips. We'll get into that effect later. Um, this is essentially a revival. It's really cool because in a lot of ways, this is your recovery. But it also, alongside cards like Foolish, lets you do plays as well. Nice. Finally, we have two Magistus Thurgy. Uh, Thurgy is a card that is a quick play that you target one of your monsters, or Magistus monster, and equip a Magistus that isn't a level four from your extra deck graveyard, or graveyard. Uh, it's really useful, it used to be useful back then because that meant that if you normal summon a Reliona, you could search into this and get an equip play off. But now, because of its quick play nature and the new boss monster, you're actually using this as a form of pseudo disruption. Okay. Uh, then we have the three uh, unexpected die. Uh, for special magically, but we have two uh, match spell power mastery. Uh, as it turns out, this searches an Endymion card, which our Endymion is an Endymion card, so it's another oh. way to get into it. Uh, nice. You're never going to use the spell counter effect. If you do, I guess you could play a more spell counter focused deck. Like I said, this deck is not only just Magistus support, it's spellcast support in general. Yep. Uh, we have three Pot of Prosperity. This is going to sound weird given the fact that I mentioned that this deck is an extra deck focused deck, but in a lot of situations, you're only accessing a very limited portion of your extra deck, which is your end game boss monsters. And a lot of times, once you go into one route, the other routes become somewhat unviable. This card essentially allows you to dig a little deeper for the route that you may want, and while well, it fixed your hand, you're never going to be banishing six. You'll probably only be banishing three, but if you really need to, you can banish six. Okay. Uh, the one called the Haunted for a hand trap, uh, called the Call by the grave for the hand traps. Yeah. One, Foolish Barrel, since you can dump any of your Magistus monsters and then revive with Vitra. Uh, and then, because we're in that kind of format, we're playing three Forbidden Droplets and one Forbidden Chalice. How to make a budget deck not budget. Yeah, <laughs> no unfortunately. Well, like, yeah. fortunately, Brothers of Legend comes out, I think, in a week or so, so look forward to that. But you could play probably you could play three. Three Chalice. Three Chalice and an Imperm yeah, as well. Yeah, if you wanted to. Uh, yeah. The reason I play this one, because there is, again, some incidental synergy with Droplets. You can launch your Equip cards. You can also um, send your trick clowns. You can also send your trick clowns. So you can send a bunch of things that are inherently mo aren't monsters at the time, yeah. but because they're sent as a monster card, they get to uh, prevent your opponent from spawning with monsters. Yeah. So really useful there. Uh, going into the X-Deck, we start off with the most important Magistus monster in our three Magistus Artemis. Yep. Artemis has uh, two effects. First off, starting off, you may have seen this card in a vault where you just use it to link away an Alistair to make a light monster. But there's actually text on this card. <laughs> Uh, first off, uh, when a Magistus monster normal special summon, you can equip this card to that monster. Really useful now because you actually have Magistus extra deck monsters that you want to slap this onto. More importantly though, while it's equipped to a monster, it's a searcher for any Magistus level 4 or lower monster. Okay. This is especially useful because one, it's free searching, but the fact that your Zorora and your Endymion can equip directly from the extra deck means that both cards essentially act as rotas for the deck. Nice. From there, we then move on to the next Magistus monster in our one Iwas. Uh, Iwas, you actually know where to summon this card. You're going to almost equip it, but there's two effects. While equipped, the monster gains a thousand attack. Cool, just extra boost. More importantly, while it's on the field, if you ever find a way to, I guess, summon it, maybe you want to side a way to summon it, uh, you can target one of your opponent's monsters, uh, equip it to that monster, and then take control of that monster. It's a snatch deal. Oh, okay. And then, well, again, the extra attack is useful. Uh, going then, we have the Magistus Exceeds monsters. We have the one Ninaru, the Glass Goddess. This card either lets you detach a material to add back a spellcaster, or while it's equipped, it allows that monster to attack twice and lets you use its effect to target another Magistus card and one of your opponent's spell and traps and blow them up. This okay. is spell and trap removal when you need it. But the more important one here is the Magistus Reliona Vary, the Glass 
I don't actually know how, I don't know, think I've read the full name of this. Really one of the wondrous Magistus Witch Wardrobe. That's a lot of name, bro. Yeah, just, we're just going to call this Glass Witch. Uh, Glass Witch here is a level 4 that requires two different uh, spellcasters of different attributes to make. Okay. Uh, two effects. It has obviously an equip effect as well as a activation effect. By detaching a material, you can special summon any Magistus monster from your deck. Only caveat is you're locked into Magistus monsters. Mm. So while this effect could be really good, the fact that it locks you into Magistus monsters, and as I've already described, none of these effects are exactly superb, um, makes this card rather limited in its options. Uh, usefully, on the other hand, is while it's equipped, it's an effect negation for your, against your opponent on your turn. But the reason that this card is played is because it lets us access our Zoror, and Zoror now becomes a little more useful thanks to this new Magistus monster, and a two Zoror, the conflagrant, conf the conflagrant Magistus Calamity. These names, this, this suck. Is, yeah, these names are long. These names suck ass. Yeah. Uh, so this thing is twenty nine hundred. Pretty yeah, beefy stats. Big it has big. two effects. First off, when it's Synchro Summoned, it equips a Magistus monster from your X deck, which is pretty much very similar to the original Zoror. What's even more powerful is that any for all the cards that uh, Magistus cards you have equipped to a monster, not just itself, your opponent cannot activate the same kind of card effects. Okay. Oh. I.e., if I have equipped an Xyz or a, maybe a Fusion, my opponent cannot even attempt to activate the effects of either of these card types. That's pretty good, actually. And it helps the fact that because it's synchronized itself, it automatically equips something already, guaranteeing you one uh, additional negation, uh, I guess, prevention or lock. Flood it's like gate? a floodgate. Like flood yeah, it's like it a flood prevents gate. a floodgate effect. Yeah. And this is where, I guess, the entire deck comes together. First off, once again, this is where cards like your Magistus Thirty come into use because on your opponent's turn, when your opponent decides to commit to a play, you can use Thirty to equip the right extra deck monster to lock them out of their effects. Likewise, cards like Rillion and Crowley can banish themselves after you put a number of Magistus monsters into the graveyard after equipping them with cards like your Zorora to then re-equip to this monster and then apply Floodgate effects as well. Now, the reason we're playing two is, well, uh, there's two. There's an additional effect to this I forgot to mention. Uh, what makes this really strong also is that while it's in the graveyard, you can destroy any other Magistus card, especially some of this card from the graveyard. Oh. And that continuous effect of Lockdown is not relative to it being Synchro Summoned. Likewise, because that effect applies to any monster equipped, uh, any Magistus monster equipped to something, it means that it doesn't even have to be equipped to it, which is particularly useful because then it turns cards like Endymion and Zoror, who can equip directly from the X deck, into additional means to apply his floodgate effect even after it dies. And that's why you can make two. The equip effect is, uh, from X deck on Synchro Summit is not once per turn, meaning that if you make two, you can equip two different kinds of X deck monsters and layer your floodgates. Your opponent will therefore have to negate both of them to negate both of the floodgates applied to any of the things equipped to it. That's and amazing. that can be incredibly powerful, especially once you apply really on its effect and you're locked into the X deck component. Uh, right. Then moving on to the, I guess, the last Magistus monster, we have the Varum. Varum is the original synchro for the deck. It's kind of crummy. Um, one, if it gets destroyed, while well, synchros, if this card, synchro summon card gets destroyed, it nukes the field. Cool. You could summon on going second and probably try to go second with it. Uh, more importantly, though, while it's equipped to a monster, uh, that monster cannot be destroyed by spell and trap effects. And if it battles a monster, it just blows up that monster. It's a Yo. great thing to equip with your Zoror yeah. to give it inherent protection against things like Lightning Storm while also protecting it from battle against beefier monsters. You also have, now that I'm thinking about this, like this card gives you so many outs to whatever is relevant in the meta. So like, let's say you're playing against Sword Soul. You can always just equip a Synchro. Yeah, and then your opponent pretty much doesn't have, a, uh, your opponent won't have a way out it. They they can make Chain Ying, which is kind of unfortunate, but you have ways to get around that. Yeah. Uh, what's particularly important with this one though, as I mentioned, is that Zoror's effect applies as long as to all to any Magistus monster equipped to a monster. Monster. Yep. Which means you can also make a Boreload Savage as well, oh, equip quick. the Link, and it still applies the Floodgate Negation. Furthermore, because Artemis itself doesn't care uh, who it's equipped to, as long as it's equipped, it can search as well. Yo, that's so pretty good. When you make a Boreload Savage, <laughs> you turn Boreload Savage into a single Negate that searches on the following turn. If you back it up with a Zora, you turn that into a Floodgate that can search and has a single Negate. It's actually... It's, with given hands, it's actually quite possible to end on this board rather easily to first off stop a Nibiru that would ruin this board, but also still floodgate your opponent potentially out of three different extra deck types. That's really good. Yeah. Uh, you do only play the one because at this point you'd rather equip from the extra deck than from the graveyard for the setup. Yeah. Uh, finally, wrapping up the extra deck, we have the Bahama Truck, we have the Toad, you know where this goes, we all the water monsters we play. Yep. And then we have the one Hauk because we're not only playing Magic Kaliba, Spellcaster, uh, Zorora, as well as Effect Veiler. Uh, the idea is that you sync, uh, you make this card using one of them, summon out Effect Veiler, link it away to go into our Selene. Uh, Selene, you may see in the Axis Code OTK, but because you're actually playing more than just, 
I guess, Valor as a spellcaster, this card actually can turn into a reborn late in the game. Oh yeah, you actually have plays with Selene. And you can actually then start comboing off and building boards with it. So, oh, yeah. cool stuff there. Uh, and that's actually, shocking enough, that's actually 15 cards. This is the first time I'll give you a 15 card extra. Oh, full 15 cards. We but, take those. Uh, but that's the deck. Uh, I can show you a quick combo hand if you want. Oh yeah, if you have one, let's, right. let's do it. Let's do it. One minute, 37 seconds later. All right, so I have a, uh, the combo I'm going to showcase here requires you open one of these two cards and then literally any other spellcaster. Okay. So here's how this is going to work. Uh, I'll show you both lines. Let's say I open the Zorora in this case, right? So, so it's a two-card combo. It's a, essentially a two-card combo. It's okay. a two-card combo where this can be literally anything that isn't, well... It, it has to be a spellcaster. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. So the way it's going to work is I'm going to start by normal summoning out the Zorora and then activating Zorora's effect to equip images this monster let's say in this case our link monster we can use the link monster to search this is more relevant with Riliona, but let's say we're going to use that effect to search into something like a crowley because the extension is nice yep do the fact that it's equipped though however when it becomes equipped it applies its effect to special in the spell casting your hand onto the field here uh in doing so we're actually going to then overlay these two why are we going to overlay these two? Because then we can access our Glass Witch. We're going to activate Glass Witch's effect, detaching the Zoror, sending it to the graveyard. Then special summon out the Riliona. Riliona will then activate, allowing me to search for a Magistus spell and trap, of which I'll grab my Vitra. I'll activate said Vitra to revive back the Zoror. Now, I have a level 4 spell caster tuner and a level 4 monster of any sort. I'll synchro summon both monsters and then make my Conflagrant Calamity. Conflagrant Calamity will then trigger, allowing me to then equip the Varm from my extra deck for maximum protection. Uh, if you know you're playing against Tribegate, it maybe you just gleamed out of nowhere, you equip the Nina Ru instead. Regardless, let's say I equip the Varm. From there, let's not forget, Rillion has effect in the graveyard where I can then banish it to then re-equip the Guard of Last Goddess, in turn locking my opponent out of basically synchros and uh, link monsters for the turn. Yep. And this is just the basic combo that you have. From there, you could obviously, before you apply this effect, extend a little further in a lot of different ways, but at minimum, you can lock your opponent out of two monster, uh, two types of extra summons. Yep. Likewise, let's say if I was to open the Riliona instead first. Okay. Uh, or the Riliona instead first. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna normal summon the Riliona and I'm gonna apply Riliona's effect, but instead of searching the vit uh, Vitra like I did last time, this is when I'm gonna search the Thurgy. Yep. I'm going to activate Thurgy's effect, and this will allow me to then re-equip my Artemis. Artemis's effect will then activate, allowing me to then grab the Crowley. I'll then use Crowley's effect, sending the other spell cast in my hand to Graveyard to special summon it. And because they're different attributes, I can then once again overlay them to make my Glass Goddess, detaching the Riliona to then special summon out the Zoror. Zoror's effect will then trigger, allowing me to equip literally anything else, let's say in this case the Niru, which applies its effect and special summon back to Riliona, once again letting me synchro summon with both monsters, to make my Zoro. Zoro will once again then re-equip literally any monster of my choice, in this case the Varum, and then in this specific combo, I actually have two different options that I can equip from depending on what I'm playing. But once again, I can banish a Riliona to equip one of these to lock my opponent out of two X deck monsters. So either way you have- Any way you have two. Two floodgates. Yes. Or one floodgate, but two types. Right. Uh, going from there, the other combo I do want to showcase is just how to make Toad. Because oh, okay, as it turns yeah. out, uh, people tend to like, Think that's a little more complex than it should. Uh, realistically, likewise, this is when ha what happens when you open a Dimion instead of any of these two and any spellcaster. Let's say this one here. In this case, once again, we'll go to normal summon the Endymion and then apply Endymion's effect to equip the Artemis. When after we Artemis's effect, and then search for our one of Crowley. And we're going to then activate Crowley's effect, discarding the other spellcaster to special summon the Crowley, and then in doing so, we're going to activate Crowley's effect to change it to a water type. Uh, from there, we can probably activate and Dimion's effect, blow up the actual equipped cycle card if we choose. But since they're both water now, we can then overlay both monsters, summon out our Bahamut Shark, detach, in this case, the Crowley, in case we want to make a Zawara later, and then summon out the Toad. Yep. And you can actually do this, if you have the pop extension, do this right before you actually go into your Zawara play to have some kind of a protection. I was, against I was like gonna say, you technically have Trick Clown effect as well. Yes, you, you don't need it for the, yeah, yeah, you don't need it for the combo, but you could do that, and then that's more extension, you have more cards. Yes. Yeah. So there's a number of different ways, like Likewise, um, if you open, in this case, like literally just two spellcasters, mind you again, because really Yona can be made using any two different spellcasters yeah. of different attributes, as long as you open a way to get two spellcasters on the field that literally aren't the same type, and because Crowley can be literally any, any other type, type uh, there's a lot of ways to just get into this play, and this play alone inherently leads you to your Zoror. Yeah, that's really cool. I didn't think this deck could do stuff like this. Now, with that being said, uh, one question that people tend to ask is, is this deck meta? And the answer is no. Have you, If you've seen the current meta, the meta is currently playing three 
Forbidden Childs, three Forbidden Droplets, three Imperm. Because the format is built Dark Ruler No More as well. And Dark Ruler No More. Yeah. And unfortunately, as you know with how Savage works, this card pretty much loses to the same thing. If the effects get negated, the equips, unfortunately, do fall off. Definitely a really cool rogue deck, though. Yes. Uh, luckily, because of these effects, technically, when you equip with these effects, they don't fall off. Yeah. But sometimes a crucial one does, and that really can mess you up. Yeah. Likewise, the deck kind of suffers from this issue of being a two-card combo deck in a format of one-card combos. Yeah. And that inherently kind of suffers it. With that being said, though, this deck is really freaking fun and has a lot of potential in other decks. For example, uh, no one wanted me to talk about this. Uh, Zorora literally requires a spellcaster tuner and a non-tuner monster. Uh, so you could probably summon in something like special summoning a harmonizing magician, the pendulum monster, special summon any level, other level for magician monster, Yo, best deck. and then synchro summon into this and then literally go equip one of the two you might be playing to lock out your opponent in the meta. Treff, if you're watching this, this is this is this is, a, this is a funky ass tech and because this, again this card brings itself back it actually has some decent like recursion as a beater on its own yeah for whatever you want to do for it. yo please all right thank you tony for showing off the deck profile thank you for the combos we appreciate it again make sure to go subscribe to tony make sure you hit that subscribe button here as well um yeah that's really all i gotta say tony we'll see you soon thank you for being on the channel with that's thank you and tony Not a note. peace